I would like to start with a personal note, and I hope everyone is uh, 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 safe and you and your family healthy. And despite the declining rates of pandemic, which is uh, uh, which is good, the situation is worrisome, as we know in 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 Ukraine and other tensions in the world. Um, but let us see now what we have learned from pandemic so far and what we can do. As also uh, Sean presented the number of cases, this, this is of uh, uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, is close to 423 million. In Hungary, we have like one, almost 1 1.8 uh, million. And the number of deaths is 5.8 million. So for sure, as far as we know now, this is one of the, let's say, biggest challenge uh, we could have seen in our lives. Not only there is a disruption of our everyday life, but as Sean has also pointed out, the inequalities have been uh, uh, growing during the pandemic also. So on the positive side of the story, we can also see it as a potential for change. And let's hope that national and international aid programs, as well as global organizations, um, get their act together and help us to do better in the future. So there is a rapid and expected change in global shock and uncertainty that we all be living through. Some of the changes are the acceleration of digitalization. We are working in a different style. Students have a different, let's say, way of uh, learning. No more and more schools are going back uh, for life education and uh, st uh, stopping the, let's say, remote education. And we have seen good examples of shared responsibility and uh, and um, to be responsible for others during this pandemic. We have also seen good examples of mindful consumption, cutting down on unnecessary waste and using uh, that you re re as much as you really need. There's a pickup on online grocery shopping and food delivery and mindful citizens increased in walking and bike biking, but at the same time, we have seen that you know people were rearranging homes due to the, uh, the COVID, but some also kind of escaped to the suburban areas and uh, uh, creating, let's say, uh, conflicts with local uh, with locals. So we learned a flexible living and turned our let's say living spaces into working spaces, and we have been slowing down. And as Yuri showed, we all kind of forced to look at what really is meaningful and what is the type of life we need to live. And we have to focus more on mental and physical well-being because lots of people have been affected uh, with uh, mental issues. Is this closed on? Is not something very natural uh, for us. So. We have to redefine what is the meaning of, uh, of good life. So work is an essential part of our life. And um, as we basically were forced to do remote working, which was like happily embraced by a lot of people. But then, you know, as time was passing, you know, and people had secondary souls because they, they have been seeing the loss of community the loss of interaction, the loss of, let's say, um, uh, br uh, brainstorming. So yes, it is nice in the sense that uh, we can live, um, we don't have to commute, for, especially for people who live hours away from their workplaces and for those uh, who have this option. And now most companies are in the way of, let's say, doing surveys and trying to rearrange offices, cutting down on office space and creating co-working spaces, support desks, some kind of combination of home and office work. Most of the statistics I have seen 
were showing that a lot of people were um, actually liking this uh, combination of home and office work. And in a lot of companies now adopting uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, hybrid schedule, two in the office, three at home, or vice versa, depending on the, on the let's say, on the, uh, on the type of work uh, they have to do. So the concept of, um, let's say, uh, living in a city that everything is, uh, is close by have been, let's say, reevaluated and, and more appreciated. Because if you can, let's say, do work, live, use the infrastructure, let it be health, education is in a 15 minutes distance, that definitely helps, you know, life quality. At the same time, with the escape to the, let's say, to the suburbs, we have seen that this geographical separation of where you live and where you work um, puts a lot of toll on the environment. And uh, and also it is not not helping the let's say the integration of the local uh, communities. So basically, it is the responsibility of you know of the of the civils and of let's say the local local governments and global institution also to encourage let's say development on transfer sharing integration of work home life and leisure. So what do we see now? So there is definitely a need for a more flexible work culture, which is called now hybrid work, which is hopefully will enhance our working experience and not will be a deprivation. Online shopping is definitely up and we have to take care of a lot of businesses, let's say in, a, in an online manner, and not in personally. Education has also changed forever for most of the people. Travel habits have changed. In the past, let's say, and we have been in two years pandemic. Now we see that inflation is up. And this, in Europe, it is driven mostly by rising energy costs. Economies have been picking up uh, uh, quicker than it was expected. But we see disruptions. Of course, it depends on which parts of the world in supply chains. We all know about the lack of chips, buying uh, buying a car, new car especially, be, uh, became an issue. Our travel habits have also changed. Travel restrictions and especially health stories stopped us uh, from uh, uh, traveling. And now it needs to be re evaluated um, and what we are, when we are talking about the meaning of let's say or the definition of new life we can see some good examples that um, <clears throat> people have started to explore something that is closer that they were restricted to go from let's say to far locations which was very much in habit <clears throat> for a certain part of the population for years now so Something that is close and, and uh, they can go to has been revaluated and appreciated, especially when you uh, can go out only for a limited time or just to a certain distance. It is, it is <clears throat> the value of what you find in your, your local neighborhood is highly appreciated. International companies have also cut down on, let's say, on on international trips and it has been taken over by video meetings. Of course, there is an eagerness to go and travel again, not just for business, but especially for people who haven't been able to see their families uh, for a long time. So travel needs to be resold. We need a more sustainable, let's say, uh, travel habits. And we need to all align on how we how we travel and work with professionals and taking into consideration health, climate, cultural issues, and also be sensitive, you know, what is the impact on the local community, what is the impact on employment and culture as well. 
In terms of economic uh, implications, McKenzie has done a lot of uh, uh, surveys. The latest one that I have seen is from January 22. And inflation as pandemic was, uh, let's say the pandemic curves were getting a bit better. Inflation was seen as a big threat. Though people were positive about their expectations, um, you know, that the economy will improve in the next months. So what we have seen in this, what we can see in these studies that of course, you know, by regions we see big differences. So if you focus on Europe, let's say, you know, as in the present state of pandemic, of course, you know, this is December data published in January, so probably uh, the data would uh, sh show something different. One of the biggest concerns besides pandemic was the supply chain disruptions and inflation. But we see a fairly high number con concerning geopolitical instability and other conflicts, and also domestic and local conflicts. During this pandemic, internet usage was up by all age groups, for sure. In-home entertainment has been up. People were home, let's say, uh, restricted to their homes. So TV and other digital screen usage has been up. As I couldn't go out to see shows, uh, movies, concerts, and couldn't attend theaters. So we have been seeing an increase, increase in use of uh, streaming uh, services. However, not all students and families have access to these devices they need for, uh, for learning and entertainment and taking care of their administrative tasks. So several governments in Europe, and we could see some good examples in Netherlands, Denmark, UK, just to mention a few, that invested in technology and provided laptops, mobile phones, and tablets for those who need them for education. So if you look at it on a global scale, let's say internet penetration is 59% in the world of Northern Europe is ranking on top 95%. East Europe is, uh, is also close to uh, uh, 90%. So the connected, uh, the number of connected people worldwide is close to uh, 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 four to nine billion. So the digital population is growing, but there are huge differences by region. So we also have to take a note of that, that 2.9 million of people are still offline. So as we see on this graph, which is, was published by the International Tele Telecommunications Union, the internet access has been uh, uh, really uh, growing in the last, in the blue line, as we see, since let's say uh, 2005 has been really increasing. And those who are offline, uh, the number of those decreasing, but we still have to be conscious about that. We still have a large population who don't have access to internet. So we have all seen that the social and political implications of, let's say, of, of COVID. And uh, yes, there is a risk, and we have seen several attempts for that, that the crisis is an opportunity to introduce more alternatives and to, let's say, to, um, to limit freedom. Therefore, we have seen serious debates, collisions, protests about vaccination. And I think this, going, this is going to be an ongoing discussion between per, about personal freedom versus responsibility for others at all levels of society. And we have also seen an increase in, in let's say, in, in violence. So I think we need to understand what are the uh, changing values and demands and companies and institutions need to develop new solutions for this new demand. So we all have to be driving an adoption of a more sustainable lifestyle that needs to be a social cultural project.
So for those in this uh, seminar, I think we all need to think together about what can we do to, let's say, to promote and help uh, develop a more sustainable lifestyle. Thank you very much for your attention and stay safe, be well, and hope to see you next time in person.